Is it better to be lucky or good? Maybe a little of both. That's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. Hello, folks. This is Chris, KY4CKP. Well, we got together recently to go down to McCreary County and actually do some on-site testing for the gravel rally and testing some of our crossman repeater kits. And wouldn't you know it, one of our members, Josh KO4OSS, just happened to luck into a nice lightweight aluminum tower, uh, 30, 30 some odd feet tall, got a little tilt up base on it there. And uh, as he occasionally does, comes across these towers and graciously donated it to the club and uh, had it with him today so a uh, beautiful beautiful day could not have been a better day completely clear skies got up into the um i think mid 60s so uh we said hey <laughs> we've got a tower here uh and that should make things even better for communicating in these uh, this rural county so let's go ahead and put it up and use this here what's going to be the uh home base for the gravel rally this year this is at a uh, bread and breakfast, uh, or an Airbnb, I guess. And so uh, that's what we did. We went ahead and put it together. It's four sections. And uh, it's not a uh, uh, regular sort of a steel climbing type tower. It's aluminum. But uh, for transportation, that makes it really nice. So put it together, put some guy lines on it, and uh, put our, um, uh, in this case, we had a GP1, Comet GP1 antenna. Uh, normally we use GP3s, but uh, it's just what we had with us today. And if a GP1 will work, we know a GP3 with even more gain will work. So uh, it takes almost nothing to uh, to put the tower up. You can see just a couple of folks walking it in. And we've got the, uh, the GP1 there on the top. And, of course, the guy lines. So Josh had his truck there and uh, as a radio, so he was going to uh, use that as, uh, as our uh, net control location. And we were going to be heading out uh, a little bit later and going to some of the locations where we have, uh, for the last two years, set up uh, vehicles doing crossband. Uh, some of us have radios in our vehicles that can do crossband. And, uh, you know, that has worked okay, uh, but regular radios, uh, I've got an ICOM 5100A, some folks have Yaesu 400s or Yaesu 300s, you know, they can do crossband, but they're not meant for heavier duty use, and during the race, uh, there's going to be a lot of traffic. Typically, uh, there's sort of kind of three zones, and, uh, you know, a zone is going to take two, three hours, something like that, to run uh, so it's just a lot of, of use for uh, just a regular type radio. So we wanted to get away uh, from using our regular radios. So we built these purpose-built crossband repeaters, as you've seen in all the videos, with uh, commercial radios and a separate radio, one for UHF, one for VHF, to split the, the workload. And, of course, that's what we're out here doing some field testing today. So we got the tower put up. It took only a few minutes. Uh, it's been sitting out for quite a while, so uh, we're going to clean up the connections and things, make it a little bit easier, a little bit faster to put together, not that it took a long time. And, uh, you know, this was going to give us some good elevation. Typically, uh, with our MCOM trailer, we were getting our antenna up probably uh, uh, 12, 15, 20 feet. Uh, this is going to get us up a little higher. And uh, once guide out and everything should stand up to winds and anything just fine. Although we've been pretty lucky the past couple of years on weather for race day. And hopefully that'll be true uh, again uh, this year. Uh, and that's in late April. Uh, in fact, 26 and 27, I believe. Uh, so, yeah, we set this up and uh, then we, uh, as we'll see, had a quick meeting to just kind of go over a little bit about the overall design for this and uh, what we were going to do some testing on. We were able to test two out of the three zones uh, on this date. And they are, uh, especially the one, which is the last area of the of the day, zone three, uh, it was our biggest concern. And uh, the testing ultimately was, uh, was, was just fine from that location. And it was just fine from the morning location. 
And uh, we'll be back, and we'll test all their locations at least one more time. And uh, these uh, the equipment and with, you know, GP3s and that kind of stuff. But let's listen a little bit to the meeting we had before we headed out, and then we'll bring you folks right back. In one zones one, two, and three, Correct. right? This is last year's map, so I'll yep. probably reuse them if I can. But all right, so for zone three, that was CBRs five and six. Yep. So it was one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just want to make sure. So where we're going right now is this one. So <clears throat> we'll ignore the highlights. I'm going to have to. I'll, I'll edit the document no and get rid of all that. So. Uh, the two meter frequency for those of us going out to these far end and this one, I don't know who's going to make the run and who's going to stay well, back here. Well, there'll be lots of us making the run actually. Okay. So that we everybody have more than gets one to drive today out out to the distance. It's kind of locked down at the moment. Well, yeah, your truck would kind of take something. You just have to run it. fast. <laughs> you want somebody to stick around with you? Probably kept up oh, for a I'm mile or so. Okay. <laughs> don't think I was so, wrong. <laughs> He's got Hank. Look at Hank. Look at Anyway, I mean, we're out in the trees. I'm not, I'm so, not used to that. Zone three is where we're going. We have two crossband repeaters we're going to put up today. One of them is going to be, I'll just tell you guys the frequencies, and we'll show everybody as we set up these crossbanders. So the two-meter frequency for crossband repeater number five is 146.595. Okay. Okay. The, Everybody today for UHF is going to come back here to Josh. We're pretending Josh is net control of the trailer. So that's going to be 445.7375. So you can have, like, if you have a dual band radio and you have the ability to be monitoring, I would say leave the, the 440 frequency on one of, like, a sub band somewhere so that you can hear it. Be aware, though, if you transmit on the two meter into the cross band or you're not too far away, you're probably going to get some feedback because you're talking into a repeater and coming back to yourself. So volume adjustment helps there. So so the CBR number five is 146.595. I should have printed a whole bunch of these, huh? It's all right. And the CBR number six is 147.510. Basically, the P1 button, we've set up, they're programmable, right? So we go, hit P1, it tells you that's low two. That means we're on high power. So low one, low two, and then arc <coughs> means high. I don't know if you notice, but the low indicator at the top vanishes. So that I'm means high. you're on high power. Oh, yeah. We're going to leave it on low on the two meter, and then we're going to leave P1, same thing. Uh, I'm sorry, on the 440. So we'll go to low one and leave it there. Uh, P3 is your, what do you call it, your memory bank selector. It's mm -hmm. like a zone selector and a DMR radio. You press P3, and you select the memory bank you're looking for. Well, the way we set this up is for CBR5, which is this location, it's going to be there. So they're and both on CBR5 and you're good to go. Yeah, so the 440's on, the way we programmed them was to make it like as simple and as if possible. if I was at location one, they'd both be on CBR1. Correct, that, oh that would be God. the key. And frequencies are going to be different, so, because the first year we did this, we tried it. And they all, all the crossbanders start talking to each other. Yeah, you can't do that. If you get what they got. You, you get can a big have everybody split. on one frequency, but you can't have everybody on the same. Both on same frequencies, yeah. yeah. Got to be either a 440 difference or a two meter. I did the same thing. I want to see. all Wayne County keying up one day. <laughs> we'll do this if we can get done. When we're done, I want to shift this. I want to put the two meter on the 88 and see if we can get the 88 from up here. I think we can. Because we're high. I mean. Mm -hmm. So if we could if we could hit that, we probably can hit the 150 too. And we're really not far, man. Believe it or not, Wayne County's just right there. Well, and and I, yeah, when the I was county, looking I'm at the map, the county line from here to the Monticello Repeater is not far. You should be able miles, to hit the 150 12 miles, here. something like that. So to Monticello. I was actually talking back to downtown, you know, Whitaker lives right in Monticello. Mm -hmm. I was talking to Whitaker from here, I'm simply from, on this too much from my like truck. To you ready, okay. Devin? Are you ready? Uh, what you got? So two meters. Yep. Two fifty point three. You just transmit the tone is all you need. It's you don't have to have it on. Make sure it doesn't shift. And then it's not. Go for it. K four O Z I testing testing K four O Z I testing. I heard you down there. All right. Well, as uh, the folks kept uh, testing on this location, this is in zone three, the furthest location from where net control is going to be there at the Airbnb. We discovered that transmit seemed like that was working okay, but we were not receiving 
on 70 centimeters, uh, which is the, uh, the lower radio of the two in the bracket there. And so they uh, got a little bit confused, of course. Uh, we thought everything was okay, uh, but uh, just uh, it, was, it was just obvious that, again, transmit seemed okay, but reception was not happening. Uh, and so they looked at that for a little while, uh, of course, a whole bunch of hams. So uh, discussed and thought about, you know, what might be going on, what could be the issue. Of course, we try to run everything on the lowest power level we can which is always a good idea uh, with your radio. Uh, you know, use the lowest power that gets the job done. But in particular for our situation, we want to, uh, you know, drain the batteries as slowly as possible. We've got 15 amp hour LifePo4 batteries in each one of the kits. So we were trying to use the, uh, the lowest power, um, but they, of course, did try bumping it up to medium power and even high power, which was... I think it's 40 watts for the 70 centimeters, and that wasn't helping anything. And uh, so that was it was pretty confusing for uh, for all of us. Uh, and so again, they did some testing, and then we had our trucks just down the hill from this location, and uh, we could hear the transmit. Uh, so we knew transmit seemed like that was functioning, but it was still confusing that we weren't receiving on the 70 centimeter. We use 70 centimeter kind of as the backbone, and that's what goes back to net control. So we brought the equipment down a little bit further down the hill uh, where the road and the trucks were and started doing some further testing and set the uh, antenna and everything back up. Fortunately, we had uh, two different kits with us, two different CBR kits. And uh, so we just, you know, did some testing. You start to um, swap out a component here or there and, and check uh, output. And turns out that... Uh, the 70 centimeter radio in kit number one wasn't functioning correctly. And we weren't 100% sure if that was purely a programming issue or if it was uh, maybe some kind of a hardware issue with the radio. We thought all the radios we had were fine in the limited testing we had done back at the shop. But, you know, here we are in the field doing real world testing and there's obviously uh, some kind of a problem. So... Uh, it's always good to, uh, I think I've mentioned this before, uh, try not to make assumptions. It, it, it's hard to do, right? It's hard. We think we know things. We think everything's fine. Try not to make assumptions. And if you're having problems, go back to the beginning, take a deep breath, take your time, and just re-troubleshoot everything and go slow. Maybe take notes. Make sure you're not going around in circles. And, you know, change one thing at a time and test again, see if anything makes it better or worse. So that's what we ended up having to do. And so, again, fortunately, we had another kit with us so that we could try, um, you know, sort of some new hardware. And things were, were actually working just fine from the location. In fact, down here, lower than where we normally are, uh, it worked fine. So we know we're in good shape. So uh, we went back to the Airbnb and just sort of had a, a quick sort of a wrap up and began to, uh, to break down the equipment and the tower and everything. Uh, again, we had a great day. It was a lot of fun. But let's go back to the shop and we'll hear uh, Mike and Don doing some testing of the radio and we'll see what they found out. All right, go ahead. Uh, take two. 0.224.25 microvolts. So that's less than a quarter of a microvolt in, and it's break and squelch. Drop that and, one forward. And then we have this. So we had a bad radio. So this is the extra 440 radio. We're getting ready to put the solder blob on it. I'll block your light. Reattaching the pigtail to the new radio. Getting things trimmed up. We could get the cable out. Go 
Looks like it's going to work. Huh. We shall see. Yeah. Magnet mill. Duck to the magnet. There it goes. AC4 DM testing, testing on frequency. AC4 DM testing the cross band repeat unit number one. <laughs> Seems like it's working, and we got a lot of a lot more deflection. Yeah, considering we're on the on the dummy hook, that works. All right, folks, that's going to wrap this one up. We will see you folks in the next video, seventy three.